Well, folks, in these parts, remember the Alamo as one of the first big battles for the Republic of Texas. The Riverwalk, downtown San Antonio, and the Alamo Dome, where tonight another first will take place as the Rangers take on the San Diego Padres in the first baseball game indoors at the Alamo Dome. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad to have you along for this momentous occasion. Yeah, baseball's never been played here. This facility uh, built 20 years ago, basically for football, uh, has hosted almost everything but a baseball game. That's all going to change here tonight. And for the Rangers uh, going to the hill, a continuation of the uh, spring tune-ups, if you will, Alexi Ogando, his last to start. You know, Ogando pitched really well, Buzz, the game we broadcast against right. Cincinnati. Early in spring training, he struggled a little bit, especially with his command. But in that game against Cincinnati, 82 pitches, six innings, no runs, one walk, five strikeouts. Pitched an excellent game. He'll be starting the third game of the season in Houston. This is his tune-up for that game. Wants to build off of that last good start that he had. And very much like last night with you, Darvish, you don't expect Alexi Ogando to go much more than four innings or maybe five at the outside, but uh, in any event, he will get the tune-up needed to get him ready for the regular season. Rangers looking to get back on the winning side of things. They have lost four straight. Tonight, they will take on the Padres and the short porch here in the Alamo Dome. We'll tell you all about it when we come back next with Rangers baseball on this Friday night. Texas Rangers Baseball on TXA 21 is sponsored by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer and drive the best-selling trucks for 36 straight years. Ford is the best in Texas. By TXU Energy. The right things right now. 1-866-CALL-TXU. And by AT&T U-verse TV. You know, a lot of uh, pregame festivities going on here at the Alamo Dome, rightfully so. Youngsters at uh, each position as the Rangers take the field, and we'll get uh, the signed baseball from that particular position player. And tonight, since it's uh, probably the starting lineup for the Rangers taking the field, it's going to be something these youngsters will remember for quite a while. David Murphy and company handling the signing chores. Elvis Andrews. A.J. Przinski and uh, Emily Cruz out there. So that uh, that chore is taken care of and about ready to get down to business for the first ever baseball game here in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. 21 years ago this uh, facility opened and 
Here's the San Diego Padre batting order tonight. They will face Ogando. Everett Cabrera is the shortstop. He leads off. In right field, Will Venable. Carlos Quinton is the designated hitter. Yonder Alonso bats cleanup, plays first base. The left fielder is Jesus Guzman. Jed Jerko, the youngster at uh, third base, he bats sixth. Nick Hunley is the catcher. In center field, batting eighth, Cameron Maben. And Alexi Amarista is the second baseman, batting ninth. Pitching for the Rangers, Alexi Algando talked in the open about his last start. It was an excellent start against Cincinnati through 82 pitches, six innings. Very efficient with his pitches. Good assortment of off-speed pitches in that game. Didn't give up a run, only walked one batter. Earlier in the spring, a little bit of a command issue. But last game, he threw the ball great. Hoping to back that up with another good one today as he gets ready to start the third game of the season in Houston. Ron Washington and uh, Dave Magadan. Jackie Moore out on the uh, seats. Uh, one of the oddities in this ballpark, and obviously, since it's built for football, they don't have true dugouts. They had to manufacture some, basically, and they're just uh, you know, cavern areas, if you will, that are you know, made out of the uh, tunnels that go under the seats. Well, based on this not being a baseball <laughs> field and the fact that there's never been a game here, and they didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare the field for it. They've done a pretty good oh, job. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. It actually looks great. You are right. You are right. Large down the left field line at 354, 410, going out to just about 420 in straightaway center. And then the short porch in right at 285 with a 16-foot high wall out there. Two balls and no strikes is the count to Everett Cabrera. Shortstop leading off for San Diego. Foul back and out of play. And the count is two and one. Last start that Alexi had against Cincinnati back in Arizona, A.J. Pruszynski really asked him to throw a lot of off speed pitches, really work on his slider, change speeds with his slider. Some of them look more like a curveball. Did throw some change ups, which is a pitch he's working on. But that's his bread and butter right there, his fastball. Yep. Yeah, that sets up everything when he gets that going. And with that kind of fastball, he doesn't have to worry about being real fine with it. I mean, that's, uh, that's a quality pitch when it's in the strike zone. The 2-2. That's slap foul. Cabrera just a defensive swing staying alive. Numbers for Cabrera this spring. He's had a big spring, and these Padres have had a big spring, too. They're... 16 and 18, but they have ripped the cover off the ball. 286, the team average. Popped up this on the infield and playable. Stumbling on the mound a bit. <laughs> it's Adrian Beltre. He looks at it as if to say, where'd you come from? Yep. <laughs> he knows right where it is, but still, when you're concentrating on the ball, it still poses a little bit of a problem. Not going to move. Now the Ranger defense. You saw Beltre at third. Andrews and Kinsler up the middle. Moreland at first. Outfield of Murphy, Martin, and Cruz. Left, center, and right. A.J. Pruszynski behind the plate. And Alexi Ogando is on the hill. One out. Will Venable will come to the plate. A 200 hitter for the spring. And Ogando deals strike one to it. The biggest concern down around the batting cage before the game was whether or not they were going to have enough batting practice balls for today and tomorrow. <laughs> the way the balls were just flying out of here to right field. Obviously, it's different in the game facing a big league pitcher. They're probably over the next couple of days. There'll be a few hit out there that are more like pop ups that would have been caught in a regular season game. But in batting practice, it was just really obvious. Line drives just normal line drives were just smashing off the middle of that wall out there. A lot of times in batting practice, you'll see right-handed hitters take the ball the other way the first you know, time around just to get his timing down. That's it, high in the air to deep right center field. Martin is back. That ball's gone. Yeah, that one was not a product of a short porch in right field. That was a product of he launched it about 420 feet. Well up in the batter's eye, the black netting out there covering... The seats in center and uh, slightly into right center. And Will Venable with his fourth home run of the spring gets the Padres on top. 
Well, he was geared up for the fastball and he got one belt high and right out over the plate. And he put a charge in that one. That's not one of the pop ups that sneak out of the ballpark. That was way out of here. 410 to center field. And that one probably went a little farther than that. And a breaking ball from Ogando to Carlos Quinton. As you get a look at uh, Padre Bench, Will Venable. You Darvish's buddy, Will Venable. Goes back to last year. And Venable hit one off the wall in dead center field in the first uh, appearance that you Darvish had against uh, the opposi an opposition club. And uh, Venable kind of got on Darvish after the ball game. Darvish was asked to be what he thought of Venable's shot. He said, well, I didn't think he hit it quite that well. And uh, Venable said, hey, that's kidding. That's my best bolt. Well, he's not exactly Mark McGuire. So yeah. it might have been his best bolt. Way down and missed. And down on strikes, Carlos Quentin. That's out number two. Well, Quentin's been battling a knee problem. We're trying to decide whether he'd be ready to start the season. Obviously, in the National League, you don't have the benefit of the DH, which is probably what they'd love to do with Carlos Quentin to start the season until he knows he's 100% healthy. The two away base is empty. Yonder Alonso, the first baseman, will now come to the plate, the cleanup man. That's it, the other way to left field. David Murphy just about in his tracks. In a few steps. And that'll do it. Well, the one-out home run by Venable gets San Diego on the board. A run on a hit. Half an inning in the books. San Diego won Texas coming up. Ranger baseball from With the home run, and now the Rangers come to bat. Ron Washington throws this lineup out there. Ian Kinsler leads off. Elvis Andrus, the shortstop, bat second. DH is Lance Berkman. Cleaning up, here, playing third base, Adrian Beltre. Nelson Cruz moves up a spot. He's batting fifth. The left fielder, David Murphy, hits sixth. A.J. Brzezinski is the catcher. Mitch Borland batting eighth, playing first. Leonis Martin, the start in center, and he bats ninth. Eric Stoltz on the mound for San Diego. He was a waiver claim from the White Sox last May and then pitched very well for San Diego last year. He was eight and three with a 292 ERA he had 14 starts. Pitched 90 plus innings pitched very well for them. He's earned the role as the third starter. He will start the third game of the season for the Padres. This is his tune up for that ball game. And here's Ian Kinsler a 233 hitter. You have to remember now the statistics that were in use tonight do not include last night's game. Of course, uh, Kinsler had a home run. The Rangers had four of them. He pounds this one to center field. Going back is Maben. Near the warning track, he puts the brakes on. And that's out number one. We've got a unique look at the ball game today, Buzz, from right behind, well, down the left field line yeah. behind third base. The only time I've ever broadcast a game that was not done from behind home plate. So we've got the monitor to see the pitcher and the batter. 
but our view of the game is a little bit different. Kind of feels like us uh, up there. Yeah. There we go. Kind of feels like the fans view sitting up here just talking baseball. Yeah. So what was that pitch? I don't know. Chris Blake won't wave. Wave, Chris. <laughs> Your mom's watching. That's better. Here's Elvis Andrews. And Stoltz misses high and away. The breaking ball stayed up there. It's ball one. And anyway, statistically, uh, the Rangers' stats are the same as they were before last night's ball game. They have not changed. And that looks like it's going to be a base hit for Elvis. Jerko picks it up, hands it to Stoltz going by. And uh, Elvis has got a base hit. No, it wasn't a bunt. <laughs> as he was showing the guys. That's how. That's where he would have put it, though, if he had butted it. Well, Jerko is one of their good young players that's getting a chance to play at the big league level. He's scheduled to be the second baseman. But Chase Headley got hurt, broke a bone in his hand sliding into second base. Their all-star third baseman from last year. So Jerko has moved over to third to start the season. They hope Headley will be ready probably around the middle of May. Headley had a huge year for them last year. I didn't realize what kind of year he had. Yeah. 31 home runs, 115 RBIs. Last Berkman, the DH, takes high and away for ball one. Well, that'll be a big loss for them the first month of the season. Yeah, and the Padres not uh, an overly powerful offensive team anyway, and you lose the big guy in the middle of the order, yeah. and that's a huge loss. And stakes low and outside, 2-0 and oh now. Berkman, the switch hitter, up there from the right side against the southpaw Stoltz. Elvis Andrews at the infield single at first base. <laughs> and ball three misses. A lot of hitters will fish for that 2 0 changeup. That's a pretty good pitch. But Lance isn't one of them. It's tough to fool him, and it's very tough to get him to swing a pitch out of the strike zone. Three balls, no strikes. A strike on the outside corner. Belt high. Berkman, uh, eh, maybe a half step toward first. Well, he was ready to swing if he threw him a strike, but he's patient enough to know that that wasn't the kind of pitch you do want to swing at when it counts three and zero. Borderline pitch. A little toss to first, and Elvis not going anywhere. Home plate umpire tonight, by the way, calling the balls and strikes. Jordan Baker. And he's joined by Todd Tishner and. Lance Barrett, Seth Buckmeister, Buckminster, excuse me, on the base pass. Ripping foul tip. Now the count is full. Now you would think, even though it's just one out, that uh, Elvis will be moving. Ron Washington likes to get his base runners going if they have the speed and a full count, less than two outs. Berkman hitting third. He'll be followed by the cleanup man. It's Adrian Beltre. Left hander ready, a check of first. Payoff pitch, Elvis going. Pitches outside and low, ball four. And that will put two aboard. And boy, coming up, uh, Hundley out of his crouch, looking back at Jordan Baker. He thought it was a strike. And Baker said, nope, it was not. Well, I think Lance Burton is one of the few hitters that's going to take that pitch. It's a really good pitch. It's a changeup on a 3 2 pitch, fastball count. Borderline pitch, but this is the kind of discipline that he has. He's able to check his swing. Ball is probably just a little bit outside, not by much. But yep. Again, most right-hand hitters are going to swing at that pitch, but he's very patient. The ability to do that is why Berkman has an on-base percentage over 400 for his career. Yep. Adrian Beltre takes a strike on the inside corner. Oh, two on, one out. Beltre, a home run, six driven in. An average of 261, but it's on the rise. We were talking about this earlier in the spring, too. One of the differences in the Rangers' offense this year would be. Looks like it's out of play. Probably not the same power numbers that Josh Hamilton supplied batting in the middle of the lineup. But Lance Berkman will have a much higher on base percentage. And so that will give opportunities to Beltre, Cruz, and Murphy, the guys that are hitting after him. They'll probably have more opportunities to drive in runs now than they did last year. There's three good guys that you like to have up to the plate with those opportunities. And I can't imagine the middle of this lineup having as much trouble as they had last year 
scoring runners uh, with less than two outs from third base. I mean, that was a very difficult thing. Oh, what a play by Cabrera. The second and back to first, a double play. And Everett Cabrera robbing Adrian Beltre turns it two, and that'll do it for the Rangers. No runs a hit, one man left. On to the second we go. one nothing San Diego in the Alamo Dome. the upper home run porch for every game include unlimited grilled chicken sandwiches hot dogs nachos peanuts popcorn and soft drinks for all one low price the all you can eat menu is served in the air-conditioned upper home run porch grill get your tickets today texasrangers.com or you can call 972 rangers top of inning number two san diego on top one to nothing jesus guzman Leave things off. The left fielder takes a strike from Alexio Ogando. Ogando gave up the one out home run of the first inning to Will Venable. And Guzman, second on the uh, Padres club with those four spring home runs this year. A ball and a strike. Ogando standing side saddle goes into the wide. No breaking ball. He's on top now. A ball and two strikes to Guzman. Elvis knocks it down, recovers, throws, and gets it. Well, there's another reason to. A good strong arm is a real plus. <laughs> a little bit away from Elvis, but he had enough of an arm to take his time getting the ball and was still able to get the throw to first. A guy that doesn't have a, a real strong arm is going to hurry that play and more often than not, not come up with it cleanly the second time. The one away. The youngster, Jed Jerko, the third baseman. Tom told you the story with Headley uh, breaking the tip of his thumb. So Jerko, who was a third baseman by trade, the Padres uh, converting him to second in anticipation of this season. And uh, Headley coming up with that injury just lately. So Jerko back to his normal position. Three home runs, 10 driven in for the youngster. One ball and one strike. I think that two and one. Ogano's next offering. And that stays a little bit inside, it looks like. Three balls and a strike. And Alexa, you can see a little perturbed look as he uh, stared out into center field getting that ball back. Ripping a high fastball. Now the count has gone full. 
Well, Jerko had a good year last year when he got called up to Triple A at 24 home runs, knocked in 80 runs. That they're looking at the young player to develop and provide offense in the middle of their lineup. And he goes back to second base. That'll be a real plus having a guy with power at second base. Mm -hmm. Headley comes back to play third. Jericho fouling off that first 3 2 pitch. We're going to try it again. Again, the payoff offering. Just outside. Oh, that ball four. That had to be a strike. Well, Gondo issues his first walk and not by much. On Washington keeping an eye on things. You don't typically see a lot of uh, questioning of pitch calls in, uh, in spring training. I guess only Mike Sosha gets himself in season shape by questioning the last week or so. Fastball to Nick Hundley, the catcher. It's strike one. Hundley, a good spring. Those numbers would tell you that. 375 with a 423 on base percentage. A couple, back of, a couple of years ago, Hundley hit 288. Provided some decent offense from the catcher spot last year, 157. Had over 200 at bat. So Padres and Hundley hoping he can bounce back. Spring training's in any, any indication. Looks like he can. He just got into a rut last year and couldn't get out of it, evidently. In the dirt. And that gets away from Brzezinski and down to second base on the wild pitch. We'll go Jerko. A wild pitch gets a Jerko in scoring position. Count is one ball and two strikes now to Hundley. Looks like Brzezinski in a pretty good job, a pretty good spot to block that ball. Just came up and got him on the shin guard. Kind of a crazy bounce away from him. There's another one in the dirt. This one he keeps a little bit closer. And the count is two balls and two strikes. Second straight slider that Alexi has pulled into the dirt on the outside part. Now he's ready for the 2-2. Two -two. All three. Now this was the kind of problem that Ogando was having earlier in the spring, where it was really a roller coaster ride as far as command was concerned. Felt he'd had a couple of uh, flaws. Mike Maddox worked with him mechanically to smooth things out. Thought he had it pretty well solved. It's a big strikeout here, a swing and a miss by Hundley. That's out number two. One thing we've seen in the couple of games, last couple of games we've seen Alexi is he has no reluctance to throw that slider no matter what yep. the count is. That's for sure. He's thrown it already in this game several times on behind of the count. 3 2. If you're a hitter right there after the count went to 3 and 2, you're pretty much looking fastball all the way. If you're able to throw that slider like that, you have a great chance to get a strikeout. Now, I think that's where a, a veteran catcher comes into play too, Tom, and then yeah. he'll make him throw it on that count. With first base open, even though he had pulled a couple into the dirt. First pitch outside to Cameron Mabin. It is ball one. Mabin, a 317 hitter for the spring. One on, two out. Padre is leading 1 nothing. We play in the top of the second inning. It's an off speed pitch that finds the outside corner. Bondo, a long look in as Brzezinski going through a series of signs with the runner at second. Foul tip, one and two. Well, Lexi trying to 
work around the one out walk and wild pitch. Another good block by Przinski, and it's two and two to Maven. Ogando ready. Check swing. Three balls, two strikes. We'll see if he stays in that same pattern. He got Hundley on a three and two slider. And he's run the count full now to Maven. If Maven keeps the inning going, Alexi Amarista, second baseman, waits in the on deck circle. Day off pitch. Got him swinging. He went right back to it. Back to back strikeouts after the walk. Padres held scoreless. Bottom of the second coming up from San Antonio. Padres won. Rangers nothing. Glad to have you all back in San Antonio. Nelson Cruz, David Murphy, and A.J. Pierzynski. It will be the first three Rangers to do the swinging against Eric Stoltz. Yeah, they got a nice crowd tonight of 35,000 plus. There's also a basketball game in town, too. Yeah. The Clippers were at our, our hotel last night. I thought it looked kind of tall in there when we got yeah, I was on the elevator <laughs> with a Vinny Del Negro. I saw Blake Griffin at breakfast too. Did you? Yeah. To right field and hit pretty well. Back to the wall, leaping and makes the catch. Will Venable up against the padding. About 295 feet from home plate. Well, that a rocket off the bat of Nelly Cruz, but it goes for none. Well, that's one of those. He almost got a single on what normally would be an out. Slice the line drive and. Need to get it about a foot higher to get over over the right fielder's head. The well, one away, and here's David Murphy. See Venable going back with that left hand, trying to figure out where the wall was. And Murphy skies one of the gap in left center, but this one playable. Maven makes the grab. That's out number two. The uh, turf. Field here is uh, uh, first of all it's brand new, but it's also the same kind of turf, astroturf that's uh, down in Tampa Bay. But the warning track, even though it's a different color, is the same substance. So you can't really tell by running on it whether you're on the, the green part or the brown part, which you're supposed to be able to feel for the warning track. So you still have to use your hand to find out where you are with that wall. 
but it looks like there's a difference. Yeah, if you're if you're keeping your eye on the ball, you have no idea what you're stepping on. It does help you if you take a glance at it and catch the ball. Here's Inski swinging on the first pitch. He rockets one to center, but right there's Maven. Three pretty well hit balls, but uh, nothing going for the Rangers. After two complete, the Padres won. The Rangers nothing in the Alamo Dome. Ball on TXA 21 is sponsored by Sonic, America's Driving. This is how you Sonic. And by Southwest Kia. Check out their deals at southwestkia.com. The Alamo all lit up in San Antonio. And uh, Bud Rodriguez down here for some pregame uh, introductions and acknowledgments. Bud really doing a great job as an ambassador for the Rangers to baseball, and he has, he's been everywhere lately. You saw him out in Surprise last week and down here, and he was in Arlington uh, with a couple of speaking engagements this last week. So he is busy hopping all over the place. Alexi Amarista, the number nine man, leads things off. And a rip and a miss. It's 0-1 as Alexi. Ogando firing that fastball right on by him. Amarista, player who came over from the Angels last year in May for Ernesto Frieri. Got a play to the left. Frieri, of course, the guy that set the uh, American League on fire for a couple of months. I mean, he was untouchable. And Amarista, the guy that the Angels sent to the Padres for Frieri. 0 2 pitch. In the air. Shallow center field. Thomas Martin in and over to his left. Out number one. Yeah, pretty good changeup that Alexi had Everest the way out in front of. A lot of sliders today, just like he did against Cincinnati. Any time in the count, mixing in some changeups. We're well, back to the top of the order now, and Everett Cabrera, who uh, popped out. To start things off here this evening, takes low and outside for ball one. And we were talking about the turf here, and it is an Astro turf, uh, the, the latest version of the Astro turf. Low and outside, two and zero. Oh. Hundred and thirty-three thousand square feet of uh, turf installed here. It's a custom playing surface at the Alamo Dome, and they hope to be able to use it. A bunch more times. They'd love to get some consistent baseball going in here. Well, after the game tomorrow, they'll roll it up, put it on a truck, and about three blocks down the road, they've reserved a rather large warehouse to store this. I guess with the hopes that they will be able to use it next year if the same weekend comes back again. Pretty expensive proposition. Yeah. Somewhere around a million dollars to put all that out there. Three and one the count. 
Ogando comes back to run the count full. Cabrera hitting in the number one slot against Alexi Ogando. Will Venable, who has accounted for the only run of the game, is waiting in the on deck circle. Ogando's payoff pitch. Down the left field line. Murphy playing that way over toward the track slides and makes the catch. Nice play by Murph. Well, when you're running fast and you have a long way to go and you're not sure if you can put on the brakes before you get to the wall, you know the ball is going to be close to the wall. One way to catch it and kind of stop at the same time is to slide. Kind of a safe way to make sure you don't smash into the wall. And that's where having that uh, the all turf on the warning track area comes into play. That would be a different deal because that was a gravel track. Sliding like that, wouldn't it? Be afraid yeah, of even part of your leg there? You, you might you might lose a little <laughs> skin on that. Uh, the aggressive outfielders, though, it, you don't see them shying away no. from it. No, two outs after Murphy's nice play. The count is two balls and no strikes to Venable. Venable launched his fourth spring home run in the first inning. A check swing here on the off speed pitch, and it's two and one. Trying to find the technical name of the uh, turf here. It's AstroTurf 3D-52 for you uh, AstroTurf fans. If you're looking for some for your backyard, very cushiony, very nice stuff. Like Tom said, it's not uh, not exactly a 75 cent a square foot proposition. It's very soft when you go down on the field. The infield, I'm sure, will be a little bit slow. For the first time they've ever played baseball, it's a pretty good surface. Worst field, I think. One of the worst fields, not counting Pompano Beach. <laughs> but we played an exhibition game in Miami at uh, then Joe Robbie Stadium. Mount Nolan was pitching in that game. The mound was just terrible. There was no, there was no clay. It was like dust. There was a big hole in front of the rubber. That was one day you just held your breath and hoped no one got hurt. Yeah. There was no one. Ogando again, the payoff pitch. Hit hard, but right there is Beltre. Scooped out by Morgan. Nice play on both ends. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Alexi Ogando. First one he's had tonight. We've got two and a half in the books. It's the Padres 1, Rangers nothing from San Antonio.
And you can suit up for spring training at the official online shop of the Texas Rangers. Has the largest selection of authentic spring training gear, including clubhouse caps, T-shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, and more. Get set for spring at the official source, the TexasRangers.com shop. Some of the gear that uh, is available. A lot of gear that we see around uh, around baseball now. A lot of the red and blue of the Rangers, and it's great to see. Mitch Moreland will start things off here in the bottom of the third. Eric Stoltz back to the hill. Rangers have been held to one hit and one walk by Stoltz. Mitch takes a knee high strike. Moreland at 386 for the spring, the club leader in home runs and RBI. Four and 13 in the power numbers. Off speed pitch, and he hooks that foul. It's, only, it's one and one. We make that 0 and 2. Mitch, as we talked about, doing a real good job this spring against left-handed pitching. And that, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, Mitch is a very good hitter, period. And just the idea that all of a sudden he could hit against left-handers was one of the baseball oddities that uh, prevailed for a while, but he is pretty well taken care of that. Ron Washington, early in the spring, told Mitch to go out and have fun. He's going to be the first baseman, and Ron wanted him to uh, look like he was enjoying the game. Mitch said that. That's all he needed to hear. Tapper foul at home plate. We'll come back and try it again. The skipper. Ron Washington, uh, I don't think gets enough credit for it. his innate sense of what to say to a player to elicit a response that relaxes that player. And it's different for everybody, but Ron, Ron knows how to handle people and what to say to them and how to treat them. You know, I think you you look back and most of the time, good managers, guys that uh, had winning teams over and over, had that ability, had that ability to get as much out of their the guys that are playing for them as you possibly can. Orland hits one to left field, moving toward the line. It's Guzman, and he hauls it in. That's out number one. So Mitch going the other way, hit it well, but Guzman had him played. Pretty well in left field. That's out number one. It will bring up the Jonas Martin. Last five guys hit the ball pretty well. David Murphy was kind of a normal fly ball, but Beltre hit a smash for a double play. Cruz, Brzezinski, Moreland, all with solid line drives to the outfield. Martin takes inside for ball one. Jonas playing tonight. Uh, Last night, Craig Gentry got the start in Arlington. And, uh, Ron Washington said it will probably be Leonis Martin getting the nod on Sunday night. Rangers take on the Astros in the first game of the regular season. Swing and a miss, and down on strikes is Martin. That is the second out. It will take the Rangers back to the top of the order for Ian Kinsley. Big curveball. Pretty sharp breaking curveball. Slow curveball. Looked like a pretty good pitch to hit about halfway to the plate. And it just kept breaking. Martin committed his swing and just couldn't quite catch up with it. Well, for Eric Stoltz, the first strikeout that the left-hander has had tonight goes along with one walk. And now here's Kinsler who skied to center field to get proceedings underway tonight for the Rangers. Good slow breaking ball. It is 0 and 1. Check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. The appeal down to first. And Todd Dishner said, "Yep." Rang that right hand up. It is no balls and two strikes. That's a little bit low. One and two. Gins, of course, uh, one of the four home runs for the Rangers in last night's ball game against Mexico City. The check swing that pitch off the plate inside. It's now two balls, two strikes. 
And as we mentioned earlier, statistics from last night's game do not count for spring training stats, as far as the Rangers are concerned. Three and two now. He ain't able to come back from an 0-2 deficit to run the count full. If Kinsler is able to keep the inning alive, you have the shortstop Elvis Andrews. Practicing his uh, left-handed swing over there. Payoff pitch, got him swinging. Plus, Dulce gets back-to-back strikeouts. And the Rangers are gone in order. He has now retired seven straight. After three, it's San Diego one, Texas nothing from San Antonio. Welcome back to the top of the fourth inning here in San Antonio. One nothing. San Diego is leading. Alexi Ogando back to the hill, and uh, he will face basically the middle of the order: Carlos Quentin, Yonder Alonso, and Jesus Guzman. Just one base hit in the ball game for each ball club. San Diego is off the bat of Will Venable left the ballpark. That's the difference in the game. Now the first batch of goodies, Buzz, all the way from East Texas. Kathy, I think it's Gaw, Nancy Fessler, Faye Whitlove, and Mary Ware. Thank you very much, ladies. Enjoy the ball game. And thank you for the nice pack of treats you sent us. They ought to get a little special recognition going from East Texas to come down here to find us. Not good. Good job. I always appreciate it when stuff shows up on the road, <laughs> which happens more and more now. Two and one, the count to Carlos Quentin. Quentin went down swinging his first time to the plate. Check swing, didn't mean to do it. It's fouled out of play, two and two. Now, Legondo, last inning, had his first one, two, three inning of the game. It has been, uh, well, not exactly an extension of, of how dominant Alexi was last time out, but better than earlier in the spring when he was up and down. Still a couple of spots tonight where Alexi has lost command of his pitches uh, momentarily, but he's been able to keep the San Diego club pretty much at bay. Gas gone full here to Quentin, leading off the fourth. Payoff pitch. Low ball four. Second walk issued by Ogando tonight. Went in the first, and Yonder Alonso will come up. First baseman, Yonder Alonso. He's had a lot of success throwing the slider behind in the count and not on a 3 2 pitch. The key for Lexi is being able to spot his fastball, throw his fastball over the plate. A lot of the fastballs today he's pulled down, low, away from the right hand hitters and out of the strike zone. But he's had it. the last two starts we've seen both of them. He's had an excellent slider. Last start he's probably a little bit better with the command of his fastball than he has been today. Mm-hmm. Yep. One ball, no strikes to Alonso. Alonso, a fly ball to left. Back in the first inning. 
pitch a little bit off the mark. It's two balls and no strikes. Quentin at first after the leadoff walk. Stepping off a modest lead, the 2 0 pitch. And that is a knee high strike. Zeus Guzman swinging a bat in that on deck circle. Big rip and a foul back to the screen. It's two and two. Padres leading one to nothing. Delgado looking for that double play grounder. And the 2 2 pitch. Pulled foul outside first and just foul. A quick bat shown by Alonzo and uh, Alexio Gondo. Dodging a bullet there. We were talking last time we saw Cincinnati. We saw Matt Latos pitch. He was the starting pitcher from San Diego who went to Cincinnati. And Alonzo is one of the players they got. As Monte Grandel, another one. Two middle of the order guys, they hope for many years to come. Also got a prospect, pitching prospect in that. So that was a good trade for both teams. Cincinnati got the top of the rotation guy they were looking for. San Diego filled in with a couple of really good offensive ball players, guys that could hit in the middle of the lineup. And they also got Edison Bocas, who's their opening day starter. So you get a number one starter for your team, a couple of Guys that could project as power hitters in the middle of the lineup, another pitching prospect for one pitcher. And when you need extra players to help fill out your roster and become a good team in the future, that's a really good trade. Ogano again with the 2 2. Another foul ball. It's just seemed kind of strange to me over the years, Tom, that you know, San Diego has not had uh, many years where they've been out of the cellar in the National League West, and their minor league system really hasn't produced the, the kinds of of uh, players you would think having all the high draft choices. This could be a double play. Ogando to Andrews. Back to the oh, Got that little tapper back to the mound with a good changeup. Oh, that's a positive pitch for him. Yeah, Buzz, that's probably got something to do with that trade to get two yeah. former number one draft choices, Randall and Alonso, middle of the order guys, hopefully for the Padres. That's what they're hoping. And there's the changeup that he threw, it tailed away from him, out in front of it, right off the end of the bat. A nice, simple little double play to erase that leadoff walk. Well, the 1 6 3 twin killing, and uh, now there are two outs, bases empty for Jesus Guzman. One ball, no strikes. Guzman, a ground ball to short. That was back in the second inning. Takes the slider low, and it's two balls, no strikes. Ball three is wide at the mark. And again, one of those one of those spots where Alexi has just lost a little bit of command in these three pitches to uh, Guzman. Not quite as sharp as he would like to be. And it's run his pitch count up. And he's going to throw his 70th pitch of the ball game right here. And he misses ball four, a four pitch walk, puts Boot Guzman aboard and brings up Jed Jerko. That's kind of a typical manager's response right there to a base on ball with well, two outs. You get the leadoff walk and then you erase him with the one six three double play. And I think from a manager's perspective, you're looking at the pitcher and saying, "Okay, you've got two quick outs now. Go get the next guy." I don't want to see a four pitch walk like that. Just a big rip and a miss. It's zero and one.
Yeah, Jericho walked his first time to the plate. He's down on the count now. No balls and two strikes. One thing about Jericho, he does not get cheated on those swings. He had a pretty big swing, and he lets it go. Toss to first. That drives Guzman back. Crowd here pretty heavily salted with the Ranger fans. You hear them getting behind Alexio Gondo. Two pitches low and outside. A lot of red and blue tees in evidence. Jericho waiting, and Ogando ready. There goes Guzman, the pitch. Hit high in the air, right center field. That's a short porch. Back is Cruz. He's at the wall. That ball's gone. Jericho going the other way. Hit a high fly ball that in the shorter dimensions here. is scraping into the second row, but it's nonetheless a two-run shot. And San Diego on top, 3-0. That's probably a ball that was aided by the dimensions. Did it pretty well. That's probably a warning track shot, though, in most ballparks. With the fastball kind of up and out over the plate. He's trying to make some contact. Pretty strong kid, though. He gets the ball up in the air. Hits it probably about 365 feet. That's pr probably a home run in some parts. In and out. And most of them. Mm -hmm. The 387 sign is probably not quite 387, they say. That was supposed to be on the other side of the sign, so it's probably more like 375 right there. But if you're Ron Washington, you're also saying, well, the dimensions didn't cause the two out walk. No, absolutely. Prior not. to that. That's why he had that look on his yeah. face. Nick Huntley swinging a foul tip. It's one ball and two strikes. Talking with uh, Mike Maddox there to Ron's right. Mike's got that pitch counter in his hand. When you're throwing well, if, if a pitcher's throwing well for him, I don't think the, cl the clicks get done every pitch. When you're throwing poorly, sometimes he clicks that two or three times. Run that pitch count up a little bit. Swinging strike three, and that takes care of it. Ogando gets the punch out. But not before Jed Jerko hits a two run shot. Two runs on a hit, nobody left. Bottom of the fourth coming up, San Diego three, Texas nothing in the Alamo Dome. TXA 21 is sponsored by TXU Energy. The right things right now. 1 866 call TXU. Hemisphere Park. Outside the uh, Alamo Dome or in the area. 
San Diego leading three to nothing. They only have two hits, but both of them have left the cozy confines of the Alamo Dome. Solo home run by Venable in the first, a two-run home run. And a jerk go in the fourth inning. Elvis Andrews coming up now to start the Ranger fourth inning. Eric Stoltz delivers low and outside for ball one. Elvis an infield hit. That's the only safety the Rangers have gotten through the first three frames. Stoltz, the 33-year-old left-hander. This is high and outside. And the count goes to 3-0. and Stoltz uh, has been around. Pitched uh, in Japan for one year, as a matter of fact, 2010 with Hiroshima. Elvis fouls that out of play deep down the right side. The count now is full. Yeah, he's 33 years old. He's not a young prospect in their rotation. He's a veteran guy. Now, twice he has been signed by organizations on a minor league free agent. Colorado signed him in that process in 2010, 2011. The White Sox did. This is loan inside, and ball four puts Elvis aboard with nobody out. First time tonight. Rangers have had their leadoff man aboard. And Bud Black. Looking at things. He didn't like that 3 2 changeup, or no. just the fact that he walked him? Like a 3 a 3 0 lead, and you walk the leadoff man in the fourth inning. Not many managers are going to be happy with that. And Black, he was a pretty good pitcher himself, so he understands that phase of it better than most. One on, nobody out. Here's Lance Berkman, who walked his first trip to the plate. Good rip on the first pitch, and it's fouled out of play. I think Lance would like to have that one back, yeah, judging that, that from. A pretty good hanger to hit right there. Andrews, a modest lead at first. The pitch is a strike. It's 0-2. Stoltz is check of first. Berkman able to check his swing. One ball, two strikes. Bergman handling the DH chores, which at least early in the season he would do so more often than not. Snap throw to first. Back standing is Elvis. Down 3 0 uh, with Berkman and Beltray and Cruz coming up. Probably not the time you will see Elvis Andrews take off unless he just feels like he can stroll into second without a throw. Breaking ball is low and inside throw. That was not in time. No wonder so many guys stole off there. Well, that's what you said. Unless he thinks he can get there easily. <laughs> and he got there easily. All these years, I had the wrong idea about good base dealing. I was, I was broadcasting a game my, the first year I was broadcasting in Detroit with Mark Holtz. Benji Gill, I think it was Benji Gill was the hitter. And on first base was a what to call on the inside fastball. It was a very slow runner. I can't remember who it was. Anyway, Benji occasionally had a little problem making contact. The guy at first was very slow, and the pitcher kept throwing over to first base. So as any normal broadcaster, you get a little annoyed when he tosses <laughs> to first base. And I say, if he's going on this pitch, I'll jump out of the press box and Johnny Oates put put on a hit and run. <laughs> put on a hit and run. <laughs> the guy, I don't even remember what happened to the hit and run, and I had to do a lot of talking to keep him jumping out of the press box. <laughs> I'll have to ask Benji about that after the game. Yeah, yeah, you should. It might not even have been Benji, but it was. I think I think it was Benji. 
Well, since he's here, you might as well yeah. say it with sounds him. better. Yeah. That way you can tell him that uh, he almost caused you to have a broken so, leg, broken leg. Yeah, I guess the point is, no matter what it looks like, saying something like that always comes back to bite you. Yes, it does. You never know. Yes, it does. Adrian Beltre hit a rock in his first time up, but it was turned into a double play by Everest Cabrera. Shortstop. And when Benji, when Benji Molina needed the triple, he could have said almost anything. If he gets this triple, I will pick anything. Yeah. You, you would have said, yeah. and you would have lost whatever <laughs> you said. You would have lost it because <laughs> there came the triple. Well, in your defense, or whoever would have said that, that may be the only park where that could have happened. Yeah, it was. Foul the home plate. There's also the one. only possible way he could have gotten right. it too. Yeah, hitting that triangle out there. Center fielder practically fell down trying to get it. I asked Johnny Oates about that afterwards, and he said, "Well, just just, uh, just trying to make something happen out there. It's not the traditional time I would have done that." <laughs> so we almost got me killed trying to do it. <laughs> A little tapper right back to the mound. Stoltz falls down, recovers, and then drops the ball. Beltre, almost a carbon copy of the little squibber that Elvis Andrews had in the first inning. And he is aboard, and the Rangers with runners at the corners and one out for Nelly Cruz. A change up that he hit right off the end of the bat, just kind of cued it out in front of the plate. Catcher can't quite get to it. Pitcher, I don't know if he thought the catcher was going to get to it or not. But he misplayed it into what I guess is an infield. Yep, it? sure is. Well, the tying run now for the Rangers at home plate in the person of Nelson Cruz. And Cruz lined out hard to right field. Sending uh, Venable right back to the wall first time up. Skies this one to right field. This should be deep enough to score Elvis. Venable with a catch. Elvis tags. The throw comes into second. And on the sacrifice fly, Andrews scores. The Rangers on the scoreboard. It's now a 3-1 to one San Diego lead. Behind number 10 of the spring for Nelly Cruz. Staying at first, Adrian Beltre. Now with two outs, David Murphy coming up. Ball one. Murphy a fly ball to left center field. His first time up. 0 for 1. Batting average hovering right around 300 for the spring. Two balls and no strikes. David Murphy for the first time in his career getting an opportunity to be the regular left fielder from opening day on. Another guy kind of like Mitch Moreland that uh, Ron Watson said, look, it's their turn. They've, uh, They've done the job. They've, they've proven they can play on an everyday basis, and now we'll start the season with them and see how it goes. They even a miss. And the count moves to two and two. Stoltz comes set. And Murphy. Left center field sinking in a hurry. Here comes Maven and together. Maven and Guzman, the ball drops between them. Everybody's safe. Beltre goes around to third. And Murphy on it first. And I would think that's probably going to be an error on somebody out there. Now, Maven is a very good center fielder. I'm not sure if he called for it. Looked like a relatively easy play for Guzman in left field. It also looked like he probably heard some footsteps as he closed in on the ball. Definitely. Yeah, you can see Mabin. Mabin yeah. screaming for the ball, in which case, even though it might have been Guzman's ball, once the center fielder starts to yell for it, the left fielder has to pull up and get out of the way and let him catch it. 
and Guzman never gave any ground until right at the end and caused him to be, be unable to come up with the ball. And they're going to charge Guzman with the error, and I think rightfully so. Yep, miscommunication. Good job on the uh, on the camera work guys to see Maven calling that ball all the way. So let's see if the Rangers now can take advantage of the two out error. AJ Przinsky up there with a count of no balls and a strike. Check swing on the pitch low and away. Brzezinski hit the ball right on the screws his first time up line to center field. Stoltz is checking Murphy at first. And in the dirt, nice block by Hundley. Two and one the count. Stoltz pretty much is the definition of a finesse left-hander, wouldn't yeah, you say? I would say so, yeah. He yes. doesn't throw the same pitch twice. He throws off-speed pitches and fastball counts, keeps it down, tries to make you swing at pitches a little bit out of the strike zone, change speeds. And he does throw a fastball, sometimes you're not quite ready for it. Yeah, that pitch kind of handcuffed uh, Brzezinski, looking for something of the off-speed variety, and moves the count to two and two. Left hander to left hander. Up the middle, into center field, a base hit. Beltre will score. Murphy will stop at second. And Brzezinski comes through and makes the Padres pay a little bit for that error. An RBI single, it is three to two, San Diego. They've well, got an inning that during the regular season, if not even right now, is going to drive a manager crazy. I already saw the look on Bud Black's face. When Stoltz walked Elvis Andrus to start the inning on a 3 2 changeup that Elvis laid off it. Then, with two outs, they make the error, and it leads to a two run inning. Dave Anderson talking to AJ Brzezinski, a little lighthearted moment over there. That's a lot easier to do after an RBI base hit. Well, the Rangers capitalizing a bit. Put an extra run across, cut the lead to. One run for San Diego. Now with two runners aboard, still two outs. Mitch Moreland will try and at least tie this ball game. Pitch a fly ball to the left as he let off the third inning. Well, tipped at home plate. It's 0 1. Yeah, nice time to get one of those hangers up in the air to right field. Yeah, he had the hanger right there, but he yep. didn't get it up to right field. Might have stayed a little bit too much inside for him. Ground ball deep on the hole on the right side, but right there is Amarista. And on to first, that will do it. Rangers, though, come up with a couple of runs. They had two hits. There was one big error, and they leave two. After four, it's San Diego three and Texas two from San Antonio.
Now, welcome back to San Antonio, where the Rangers have cut into the Padre lead three to two as we head to the fifth inning. And joining us now, Chris Medina. Chris uh, is a city councilman here in uh, San Antonio. And Chris, thanks for all the great hospitality. It's sure is great. Thanks Thank for coming you. up here to join us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me in the booth. This is exciting well, for San Antonio. But, well, that's that's the big thing about it. Big league weekend down here. First time ever, this has ever been put on. And you've got to be pleased about the response you've had from the locals. Absolutely. We are so excited here in San Antonio. And I think tonight's attendance and the enthusiasm of the crowds demonstrates our city's love for baseball. And uh, it's very exciting. Well, it's obvious uh, throughout the years that San Antonio, a great sports town in general, first opportunity for big league baseball. And um, I think it's been it's been a hit, huh? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> no pun intended. No, right. it's been a huge hit, and uh, I know we're excited about tonight's game, and folks are excited about tomorrow's game as well. Chris, tell us a little bit about San Antonio and well, why it's such a thriving community now. Well, I think, you know, San Antonio is a great place for folks to, to raise a family, and we're a strong military town, so we have a, a blue-collar feel, and we love our sports and football and baseball and basketball, so I think just... Uh, the crowd tonight, again, demonstrates our love for all those things, and, and uh, we're just so excited that uh, it's been such a tremendous hit. Uh, big League Baseball here in San Antonio. That's great. I'm sure you watched the mayor, Mayor Castro, throughout the first pitch. Do you have a critique on his form and no. how he threw that pitch? Well, we I we didn't get to catch it. We were uh, oh, still sparking. It. We missed it, but okay. I know he was... Uh, he was practicing, and, and uh, got to, it, it's a long got to stretch. throw to Pudge Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's tremendous, and, and uh, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a good distance. Um, uh, I know that uh, he, he's excited about baseball being here in town, too. Great, great. Well, this is, it, it's got to be an exciting time in, uh, in San Antonio. And the city is growing by leaps and bounds, and, and really, uh, the economy, you know, pretty bad all over the country, rebounding now, but San Antonio has really uh, fared very well economically. No, a- absolutely. Um, you know, San Antonio has, has done, a, a, I think, a remarkable job and certainly led by uh, our mayor to insulate San Antonio from some of the other uh, economic ills, if you will, uh, across the country. Uh, we've got a, a very strong economy here. Like I mentioned earlier, we're a very strong military city, so that uh, helps tremendously. Um, and we're, you know, a lot of folks don't know we're the seventh largest city in America. And, um, I'm you know, one of those just, persons yeah. that would have known that. Yeah. Seventh and largest. Wow. Seventh largest, uh, one, just under 1.3 million, or a little over 1.3 million. And we're growing. And uh, we, we love, uh, like I, I shared earlier, we love our sports and, and we're excited. Jason Fraser, by the way, is the uh, new Ranger pitcher taking over for Alexi Ogando. Fraser now on and uh, looks to be the primary setup man from the right side. Right now, the uh, liner in Ogando, four innings of work, just two hits, but three walks and a couple of home runs in those two hits. Three runs to Alexi's ledger day, four strikeouts, 78 pitches in four innings. Had to get all the stats in for the folks. Yeah. Got to get our. Uh, stats geeks out there that if we don't get those in right away they get upset so now we'll get back to the important stuff San Antonio how how important to the city has the Alamo Dome and and what it has done uh, been for the city of San Antonio you know the Alamo Dome has really really opened up our city to um, tremendous opportunities across the country we are a prime destination for large conventions uh, that folks come to from all over the country Um, and the Alamo Dome has has, uh, I think uh, evolved, and uh, you know, initially there was hopes for uh, NFL, uh, an NFL team to relocate here, um, but the the, uh, the dome has has really grown in terms of being able to attract other things. We've had the Final Four here, we've had all types of major events here, and I think it's just uh, you know, a natural progression now that we're having Major League Baseball here. And again, I think tonight's crowds demonstrate that, that we can support um, future events like this. And you would think that Major League Baseball, sometime in the near future, will take the number of teams up to 32. That seems to be a, a magical number as far as, you know, league parodies and things like exactly. that. San Antonio will be right in the forefront of that line. We will be it? right in the, in the thick of it um, because, uh, you know, we've got a strong market. We've got a strong economy. We've got a strong base of, of uh, support here in San Antonio for our sports and, and our athletics. Um, I think uh, it would be wise for folks to, to take a hard look at sure. San Antonio and invest. 
and you're you're separated distance wise enough from Houston and Dallas to have your own identity and stand on your own two feet. Absolutely. We have yeah. a strong market of, of folks from South Texas and, and northern Mexico as well that love the, the, the national pastime, which is our national pastime, but they love baseball just as uh, fervently. So absolutely I think it'd be great. A double play turn the here is very handy. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. You know, we we're talking about Ranger fans, and, and certainly a lot of them have shown up in San Antonio. Come oh, yeah. out here in San Antonio. I would think the uh, the sales of Ranger gear has gone up uh, a little bit in the last few it, days. I know it for sure. It <laughs> definitely did in my household. We had to go buy some, <laughs> some new Rangers gear, and, and uh, my little ones are here in the booth as well, and, and uh, they're huge baseball fans, um, just like a lot of a lot of kids are here that, that are enjoying the game. Great. And this year, I know when we, we were down on the caravan in, in January, and one of the things we were talking about at that time is the uh, exposure of Ranger baseball on Fox Sports Southwest in the San Antonio area. First time that's happened, and, and really happy to have this as a big part of the market now. It's, uh, for Ranger baseball, yeah. it's great for that exposure to be here. You know, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the sponsors are really happy to get market penetration here in in San Antonio that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I certainly want to thank our sponsors that I see, uh, you know, our local folks like HEB and, and Valero and Frost. And just a great, great group of sponsors that we have here that help make this event possible. So what, uh, what's the overall plan for Big League Weekend? A yearly event, do you think? I, Hoping? I, we're hopeful. Yeah. We're hopeful. It, it, um, again, I think looking at the numbers and looking at the... Uh, the uh, enthusiasm for uh, baseball. I think uh, yearly would be great. You have to think, boys, if they do it yearly, one thing they don't have to worry about is the cost of this turf because <laughs> they've, they've already put the, the outlay for the turf yeah, and it's just right. waiting for another we, one. So yeah. whoever puts on next year is going to have a chance for better profit, aren't exactly, they? Exactly, yeah. The template's been set. So. <laughs> now if we just tweak the, the foul line a little bit right field and move <laughs> either tilt the field a little bit you know, or get a higher screen out. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what they were talking down down behind the batting cage that the one thing that they might try next year is to maybe block off some of the seats out in right field and make the wall a little bit higher. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. That's that's one thing that they thought about. Well, it's it's really a good a good baseball venue. The sight lines and everything. Our, our really vantage is. point is a little bit different. Normally we're behind home plate, but exactly. this, is, this is kind of unique to, to see it from here. And I'll have to say, you know, it's nice and cool in here, and I, I can probably only uh, imagine that a place like this would be very nice uh, in the in the dead of summer, Ooh. in the thick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we played some warm games before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. 72 degrees uh, about the 20th of July. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We would. Uh, it's not bad. Be a pretty easy sell for us, I know. <laughs> Three and two, the cap. Ranger trying to get Everett Cabrera. And the pitch inside, ball four, a two out walk. So a couple of walks in the inning. But Chris will let you go. We sure appreciate well, thank you, you taking so the time to come in. And uh, Chris Medina, a counselor for it. Uh, for the city of San Antonio, thank you very much, and thank best of luck so for much. You. Thank y'all, and we hope y'all enjoy San Antonio. And, and we uh, want to say thank you to all the Rangers and, and Padre fans that, that came out today. So Great. thank y'all again so much. Y'all done here. a tremendous job. Thanks thank you. Thank, thank you very much for your hospitality. It's been super. One on and two out. Will Venable. One out of two with a home run. As Cabrera with good speed at first. Razor working from the first base side of the pitching rubber. There goes Cabrera, the pitch out, the throw to second, and he is out. Well, the Rangers guessing right, A.J. Brzezinski. Kind of like shooting ducks on the pond, got him out of there. And that'll do it. So three up and eventually three down. Halfway through the ball game, the Padres three, the Rangers two from San Antonio.
Well, three to two the score. Not a lot of uh, hitting involved. Walks have played a big role in the scoring. A couple of home runs, the two hits that the Padres have. And we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Leonis Martin to start things off against the new right-hander from San Diego. That's Dale Thayer. Thayer, a 32-year-old out of uh, Fountain Valley in Southern California. Busy spring for the right-hander. This is second year in San Diego. The pitch just off the mark to Leonis Martin. Martin, a strikeout back in the third inning. Ripping a foul. It is one ball, one strike. Rangers able to put together two of the three hits they had in that fourth inning, along with a walk and an error. Get their two runs. Padres, a first inning solo home run, and fourth inning two run home run. Off the glove of Thayer, up the middle, under Cabrera's glove, and safely aboard at first is Leonis Martin. Doubtful that once the ball was slowed down by Thayer, even if uh, Cabrera had come up with the ball cleanly, if he could have gotten the speedy Martin. The reason he had to rush like that is because he's thinking the same thing you're thinking. I don't have much of a chance. I just have to go as fast as I can and hope I pick it and get lucky. Now here's Kinsler. He takes a breaking ball for strike one. Ian 0 for 2. Fly ball and a strikeout today. One ball and one strike. Thayer last year, 64 outings for the Padres. Two and two mark with a 343 earned run average. The right hander will drive Leonis Martin back with a toss. Thayer originally the Tampa Bay organization. 2011 played 11 games with the Mets before joining the Padres. Signed with the Padres as a minor league free agent before the 2012 season. One and one the count as Kinsler waits. Pitch out. Padres guessing wrong. Ron Washington and Leonis Martin. Two and one. Normally at top of the order, Ron Washington would uh, consider the hit and run, but Ian Kinsler in his career has not been a real good hit and run guy. He doesn't hit all that many ground balls. But maybe things change. Brand new year here in 2013. And with Leonis Martin's speed, uh, May see something going on here with he and Kinsler. 2-1 pitch. Now straight back. Rangers and Padres again tomorrow afternoon. It's be a one o'clock game, 105 to be specific. And both teams head off for the opening of the 2013 season. There was Martin. The pitch is low, a double clutch, and that removes any chance to throw out Leonis. Well, he had the afterburners kicked in going to second base that time. Well, Gary Pettis has not only been working with Leonis on his outfield play, but also his base running. I want him to be able to take advantage of his speed, become a better base runner. And when Ron Washington talks about players that have improved the most, he talks about the two center fielders, Gentry and Martin, these guys that have really stepped it up this spring and become better ball players. Yep. He's very honest when he was assessing Craig Gentry. He said he wasn't sure if Craig Gentry was an everyday player until this spring. And the added power, the way he's enhanced his game, made him a kind of guy Ron would be very comfortable playing every day. 
And Martin's right there with him. Again, the 3 2. And outside, ball four. That puts two aboard with nobody out for Elvis. Good job by Kendra to work that walk. So an infield single, and now a walk. And there are two aboard. We'll see if Ron Washington has Elvis Andrews bunting in this situation. A 3 2 San Diego lead. We play in the bottom of the fifth inning. Well, late in spring training, you tend to play the games a little bit more like the regular season. If this was a regular season game, it would definitely be a bunt situation. Elvis has always had a lot of sacrifice punch. You got the middle of the order coming up. Elvis around the bunt, takes the pitch outside for ball one. Is there a cutoff uh, like the second inning, fourth inning, fifth inning? We're playing in the fifth inning to where it becomes an almost an automatic sacrifice. I guess later in, l- later in the game with these guys coming up, it probably is is more likely to be a sacrifice situation. But I think Ron has shown over the years with Elvis in this situation, it almost doesn't matter. I think he's likely to do it early in the game. Um, you know, Elvis is not going to bat with a couple of men on in the first inning, but I think any time after that third inning, if the game, depending on the score of the game, I think this is pretty much what you'll see from Elvis. Play's going to be a third, and just in, no, it's not in time. Off the bag is the third baseman Jerko and everybody's safe I was getting ready to say the same thing I thought the ball beat him but that's not the call he made was Uh, it nope said he was off the bag the ball did beat him there but apparently he didn't uh, didn't have contact with the bag and see Jerko there trying to get back to the bag as he came in and was having a little trouble with the footwork Tough to tell. Yeah. The foot must have been just in front of the bag. It looked like it was right up against it, but couldn't really tell from that angle. Not a great bunt by Elvis. He had to get a little bit farther. Love to roll it right down the third baseline. Well, now the bases are loaded with nobody out for Lance Berkman. Lance, 0 for 1. A strikeout and a walk. Martin, the runner at third. Kinsler, the runner at second. Andrews at first. And Berkman fouls the next pitch off. And Dale Thayer, the advantage in the count at 0 2. They haven't told us whether they're going to charge anybody with an error since they haven't. I'm going to assume it's just a fielder's choice to allow Andrews to reach on the butt. No error. Call strike three. Second time in a row. Lance Berkman has been called out, and Berkman barking a little bit at Jordan Baker. Oh, a very big strikeout for Dale Thayer, one away. And uh, Adrian Beltre coming out. Well, Lance was called out the last time up on a pitch batting right-handed, almost the same way. So, a very good idea of the strike zone if he's going to have a couple words with the umpire. Pretty good chance it might have been a little bit inside. That was probably the kind of pitch that you're going to get barking from either the pitcher or the hitter. If it's called a ball, you get barked at from the pitcher, and if it's not, then the hitter does that. Beltre, a looper into right field. Coming on very quickly is the right fielder Venable. He makes the catch, and that ball not deep enough to score Martin. And all of a sudden, there are two outs with the bases full. It's going to take Nelson Cruz to do something special here if the Rangers are to at least get even in this game. So a call third strike to Berkman. Beltre got jammed and fisted one into right field for a short out. And now here's Cruz, who is lined out and flied out. His fly ball last time up. Played at the first Ranger run of the afternoon. Of the evening. That is chopped foul. That's one ball and one strike. Couple of home runs, 10 driven in for the spring. (laughs) 
pitch fouled away. It's one ball and two strikes. On the Elvis Andrews bunt, they will credit him with a sacrifice bunt. So there's no time at bat. And then a fielder's choice, no error on the play. Now the one two. Got him swinging. Boy, they up there. Does a pretty good job of working around a bases loaded, no out jam. The Rangers leave them loaded. A hit, a walk. We're going to go to the sixth inning. It remains San Diego 3, Texas 2 in San Antonio. TexasRangers.com, you'll save 50% in select seating areas for most Tuesday home games. The first Tuesday home game is April the 9th against the Tampa Bay Rays. And it's also Capital One Bank Darvish T-shirt night. You'll get your tickets today at TexasRangers.com slash specials. A lot of great promotions coming up this year and it starts right out of the shoot. A good opening homestand. The Angels in Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The Ray is in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, an afternoon affair. Robbie Ross, left-hander, taking over on the hill now. Becomes the third pitcher used by Ron Washington here tonight. The spring numbers for Robbie. You remember Robbie was in competition for that number five starters role until last week. And they said we, uh, we really need... Ross in the bullpen as a left hander. He's better suited right now for that reliever role. A butt to second base. Nice play by Kinsler, but he throws it wide at first. It gets by Moreland, so down to second goes Will Venable. Single and an error on Kinsler on the throw allows Venable to get into scoring position. Well, there was no, no surprise that he was bunting. Looked like he was going to bunt on the first pitch, but it was too far inside. That was just a beautiful bunt. He had had a great jump on that ball. He was anticipating it. He charged it. And on the dead run, he just had an awkward angle. He had to feel the ball and almost throw it backwards toward Mitch. Mitch couldn't quite get it a little bit offline. Almost a great play, but it's about as nice a bunt as you can make. Right into the runners. Tough play for Mitch. So a single and an error. With Venable at second, here's Carlos Quinton, and the first pitch is ball one. See how far in he is, then he has to throw it back. And you know, Mitch, with no runner, probably could have stretched and caught that ball, but if he stretches to catch it, he reaches his hand right into the runner. And that risks a major injury. There goes Venable, the third on a delayed steal, and the throw is in time. Well, Venable trying to catch the new catcher, Jose Felix. Asleep at the switch. A delayed steal, a couple of steps, and then he took off. And Felix did a great job of throwing to Beltre, who made the swipe tag. That, that is an excellent job 
on all ends of that. We well, don't see a delayed steal at third base for the offense. No, nope. most of the time on that delayed steal, the runner will take a couple of hops, try to catch everybody up by surprise, maybe catch the catcher by surprise, maybe no one covers. Adrian catches it just in time, makes the tag on the run. And they catch that Can't fool us. <laughs> the little fisted ground ball that Beltre has slings it sidearm over the first. That's out number two. You know, yeah, we don't get to see that delayed steal very often. That was very well executed by everybody. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen it in third no. before. No, I can't. I can't remember if I have a third. And you're probably right. It's it's not a real common thing, especially nobody out. Good job by Felix of getting rid of it to Beltre and Beltre being in a spot where he could catch the ball before uh, Venable had gotten to him with the slide. There's a good breaking ball that's in and over to under Alonzo. Here's strike one. Alonzo a fly ball to left and a ground ball double play. Lefty versus lefty he takes up high and cross now with a one ball one strike count. Side corner. And Robbie, the natural cut on that fastball away from a left handed hitter. Ooh. That pitch was a strike to Berkman, and that pitch was a strike right there. That's more of a strike than what Berkman had. The 2 2. And the breaking ball is wide, so the count is full now to Alonzo. If he's able to extend the inning, Jose Guzman will be the next hitter for San Diego. Robbie Ross with the payoff pitch on the way. A little tapper that will go foul down the first base side. We'll come back and try it again. Robbie Ross, after uh, going through the majority of spring training in competition for that fifth starter spot, now backs off on his repertoire bid, goes back to the fastball, occasional slider. Kind of takes the two seam fastball out of play and the straight changeup out of play for the most part. Swung on and missed. It popped out of the glove of Felix, but he grabbed it, made the tag, and that'll do it. No runs a hit, nobody left. Five and a half have gone by. It's the Padres three, the Rangers two in the Alamo Dome. In San Antonio, Padre is leading the Rangers three to two. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning, and former UT star pitcher Houston Street is the new hurler for the Padres. Street originally from 
Austin and still lives down there. Second year now with the Padres. Spent uh, three years with Colorado enduring some injury problems. Came over to the Padres and had 23 saves for them in 40 appearances last year. Now, thinking of the Street family, I just recently watched a tremendous special. It's, a, it's an old special on Daryl Royal. Uh -huh. And they spent a lot of time on the tremendous play, the pass that Houston Street made against Arkansas, the famous play that every UT player knows all the details about. Anyway, it was very interesting to listen to Houston's dad talk about that play and how it was devised on the sidelines. Daryl Royal actually talked about that play way before it ever happened and when they called it the defensive coach said to everybody to the defense all right get ready you know <laughs> in other words this play's not going to work so right. defense get ready and they pulled the play off but that was houston's dad that made that play he was also a very good pitcher for the baseball yes, he team. was james street played up in boulder colorado in the summer ball and did he uh, yeah did you play against him yeah played with him with him yeah played with uh, he and bert hooten played up there and davy chalk and a lot of guys from Texas have played up there. David Murphy, starting things off, finds himself down in the count. One ball and two strikes. Murphy 0 for 2 today. He's reached on an error and flied to center field. A little tapper down the third baseline. Barehand, throw by Street, not in time. Well, that's a great play, though. Sure was. He, he didn't make the play because David beat it out, but... Very few pitchers are going to be able to make a play like that. He's very athletic. Rangers have uh, found a way down that third baseline and out in front of home plate to utilize this turf. I think the last <laughs> few games we've done, they've been working on that play, yeah. the swinging bunt. Watch how Street pounces on this ball, barehands it, almost like Adrian Beltre would throw that ball, going away from first base. Didn't make the play, but it was very nicely done. Not sure Bud Black is real thrilled that uh, his pitcher, who has had a few arm injuries in his career, would make a throw like that. But you got to admire the uh, the effort by Houston Street. A well, line drive off the bat of Jose Felix in the left center field, a base hit. So back to back singles. That's how the sixth inning opens, and the Rangers have the. Tying and go-ahead runs aboard with nobody out. And Mitch Moreland coming up. Jose Felix already a very productive day. He had that uh, good caught stealing throw to third base and Will Venable. And now a single to back up Murphy's infield single. The Rangers, by the way, now six base hits. They have out hit San Diego six to three here this evening. One and 0 for two. He takes low for ball one. Mitch, a fly ball to left in the third, a ground ball to second in the fourth inning. He's taking some time doing a Mental preparation as he steps back in. Now he's street is ready. Outside corner, knee high. Mitch taking a look down to third base coach Gary Pettis going through a series of signs. Gary telling the runners on base make sure that line drive goes through. The 1 1 pitch. 1 and 2. The Rangers left a couple of men out in the fourth, left the bases loaded in the fifth. Had the bases loaded, nobody out couldn't score. A pair of singles here. David Murphy at second base. Jose Felix at first. Mitch Moreland. Down on the count, one and two now with nobody out. Hard hit, fair ball down the right field line. Murphy will score. Felix being held up at third into second with the RBI double. Mitch Moreland, and we have a brand new ball game. It is 3-3.
They threw the fastball by him to get strike two. He looked like a fairly decent slider down and in. But Mitch was able to get the good part of the bat on it and rip it right down the right field line. Down and in. As short as it is, we talked in spring training in Arizona when the wall is 350 feet, 70 feet deeper than it is here. Ball rolls into the corner. Everybody scores, and a lot of times it's a triple, but not when it's only 285 feet. <laughs> not, that long, not that long a throw to get yeah. it back in quickly. Uh, definitely cost the Rangers a run or at least an opportunity for one there. But second and third, still nobody out. And Leonis Martin takes low and outside for ball one. Martin one for two at an infield single in the fifth inning. The Rangers have come back to tie it. They trailed it three to nothing at the end of three and a half innings. Pretty good rip at a fastball, and Martin fouls it straight back. A single by Murphy, a single by Felix, then the RBI double by Moreland. Mitch out of second base now. And over a third, Jose Felix. Nobody out. Rangers making a lot of noise here in the sixth inning. One ball and two strikes. But there's nothing shy about the way Leonis Martin swings the bat. That's, you know, we've seen that since the since day one when he came to the big leagues. Although when he started going south a little bit you guys get your pitcher starting to get to him pretty good the, the swing got a little defensive which is only natural but there's nothing defensive about that swing right now that's kind of the product of hitting about 360 for the spring the one two kind of lunging at that and fouls it away Jonas Martin waiting. Houston Street. OK's the sign. Come set. In the dirt. Nice stop by Hundley. And the count is even at two and two. Nick Hundley, uh, very, very good defensive catcher. Houston Street grateful for that on that last pitch. Padres with nobody out playing the infield all the way back with the exception of the first baseman Alonzo. Round ball Alonzo dies for it. He has one. The only play he has is the first. It's not in time. In to score is Felix safely aboard with an infield single is Leonis Martin. The Rangers lead four to three. Alonzo made a nice play and then looked home to see if he had a play in that little check of home plate. Was what allowed Martin to beat it out with his speed. The Rangers, a number of infield hits today. Cuts it off, looks home, not for very long, but that's all it took for Martin to sneak in ahead of the throw with Houston Street covering. Oh, what a great shot. Wow, that's great. His foot beat him by about eight inches. Nice play. Well, four consecutive hits, two runs across. Still nobody out, and here's Ian Kinsler for his fourth at bat. Rangers have taken the lead. It's four to three. Runners at first and third. Kinsler, 0 for two with a fly ball, a strikeout, and a walk. A fake, to, uh, a throw to third. Now they're going to call that a balk. Because the third baseman was not at the bag. They outlawed the throw to an unoccupied base or even a fake to that unoccupied base last year. And because Jerko, the third baseman, was not at the bag to receive the throw and the throw was not to the bag, they called that a balk. Yeah, Bud Black. I wouldn't have known that was a balk. Even with a yeah. guy on third. Unless there's a runner going from second to third or first to second, you can't throw to an unoccupied base. 
Yeah, but there were, so that's because he wasn't holding him on. Because the runner wasn't in motion, going anywhere. Oh, you know there was no there was no defensive movement to the bag to make the play on a on a runner that was advancing. Oh, you mean unoccupied by the fielder? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking you meant unoccupied by a base runner. Oh no, there, no. I'm sorry. So you got to hold the guy on. You you, you got to be at the bag. Okay. In other words, in other words, it has to be a throw to the bag. And the fielder has to get there to take that. Is throw. it different to first base? No. Like if, if you're playing, be, can you throw to first if the guy's behind the bag? If he if he's breaking to the bag oh, and you okay. throw to the bag, yes. But if he's just standing there, you can't no. throw him the ball. Uh-uh. See, Bud Black's asking the same questions yeah. I'm asking. Yep. The umpire's giving him the same answers you're giving him. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Although Bud's still not satisfied. No. I'm satisfied. You it, convinced me. It doesn't make sense. He's probably saying, okay, what about that third to first deal? You know, I mean, you fake the third and back. Well, that's not that's not the same thing because it's been outlawed this year. You can't do that anymore. And Blackie uh, got to say, well, I, I don't think he's convinced yet. Just looking at the look on his face. In any event, the Rangers have taken a 5-3 to three lead now. And on the balk down to second goes Martin. Count is one ball and no strikes to Kinsler. That's out of play to the right. So a little bit of everything here this this evening. Rangers wore out the infield uh, turf with little toppers. Made those count. Martin going to third. The throw is not in time. In under the tag. Is Leonis Martin his second stolen base of the evening? They've had two infield hits, a balk, and now a steal of third base. And still nobody out. And now the Padres bring their infield all the way in. And Kinsler a rip and a miss. It is one and two. Houston Street pulling the string on Kinsler. Street okay is the sign. The one two. Right back to the pitcher is knocked down. Jerko the throw to first and they did get him. What a play by Jerko to come in field that ball and then throw off balance to get Kinsler at first. Not an exceptionally hard hit ball. But it kicks off of Street. Martin can't go anywhere. He has to hold his ground at third. A nice quick throw by Jerko. Another close play at first, but that one nipped the in by just a bit. Black out there just to make sure the Street is okay, and you're not going to take any chances. Uh, first of all, he's uh, got his pitch count pitch up count as much as anything. Yeah. But that right shin's probably barking at him a little bit after taking a one hopper that eluded his glove. So a pitching change underway. And, uh,
All right, well, you wonder how they did this. Now, here it is. Now, this goes back to March the 11th when they put this down, first of all. They, they got the turf going down. They got that all squared around. Then they had to put the infield down and take it up again to have an arena football game in here, take all that back out. Now, here goes the dirt. That is under the padding that uh, makes the infield area. Put the cutouts down there. Anyway, that's kind of a, a time caps or time uh, lapse, if you will, from March 11th to today. And here we are. We are in the sixth inning of this ball game, and a little number off the bat of Elvis Andrews is going to be handled right at the bag by Alonzo. He will step on first, and Brad, Ro- uh, Brad Brock has a very easy out of Elvis Andrews. Staying in third is Leonis Martin. There are two away. The Rangers are working on their infield hits, boy. They've had a couple this inning, and the last two outs have been close. That ball was hit right off the end of the bat, cued it down the first baseline, could have hit the bag. The one hits to Houston Street, bounced to Jerko, and made a nice play, or it would have been another infield hit. <laughs> I, like the, I like the long ball better than the small ball, so... I'm looking for Lance to launch one right here. Yeah, this is a kind of a literal small ball. <laughs> and, and Lance Berkman will love nothing more than that because he has been called out on strikes each of his last two times of the plate. He is 0 for 2. Facing Brad Brock, the 26-year-old. One hopper that Alonzo picks off. He will take it to the bag himself, and that'll do it. But the Rangers... With four consecutive hits to open the inning, score three times, and leave one. We're going to the seventh inning. It's the Rangers five and the Padres three from San Antonio. Than 34,500 on hand here tonight. 34,641. The first night of HEB Big League Weekend in San Antonio. Nice turnout tonight, and they have seen their favorite team, the Rangers, come back and take a 5 to 3 lead. As we head to the seventh, Tanner Shepherds has come out of the Ranger bullpen and will take over on the mound. Robbie Ross worked an inning, and he is the pitcher of record for the Rangers. As Shepherds gets ready to work in his ninth spring game. Yeah, Tanner kind of turned around his spring. He was a little shaky early. I think even Ron Washington had some questions on him based on early spring training. But in his last three, four, five outings, he's turned it on and made the ball club. And they're counting on him with his mid-90s fastball, power arm, potentially a, a late-inning guy. I think even down the road, I think in the back of everybody's mind, can he be a closer? Certainly an eighth-inning setup guy. Might not have that role right now, but with his arm and physical ability, that's what they hope he can develop into. Mm-hmm. And one pitch, he gets Jesus Guzman to ground out to short. Here's Jed Jerko. This ball inside. Jerko, a two-run home run his last time up. Left the ballpark to right center field. So he's one for one, having walked back in the second inning also. 
Rangers putting four hits together, four consecutive hits in that uh, sixth inning, scoring three times to take a five to two lead, five to three lead. Excuse me. That pitch a bit low. It's two and zero oh now to Jerko. Shepard's the 26-year-old right-hander. He's back to the plate and misses. It's 3-0. That has been the one thing that uh, has prevented Shepard from really excelling at no matter what level he has been at in his professional career. There's a fastball strike. Is the inconsistency, inconsistency of his command, the fastball command. Yeah, I think the thing that really turns it on for him is if he can command his fastball and just get that fastball to run in on a right hand hitter a little bit get a little bit of movement on it because he's got he's got a great arm he's got a good curveball to go with it and Emily Cruz takes care of that fly ball from Jerko and there are two outs and that's the kind of pitch you're talking about right there that fastball enough late movement inside to where Jerko couldn't get the head of the bat to it yeah even in a fastball count yeah, if you're if you're a hitter and you're looking for a fastball and he's throwing 95 miles an hour and he throws it in the location he wants with some movement, then you've got your work cut out for you. Yeah. Well, here's Nick Hundley. Hundley has uh, had a tough evening at the plate. He has struck out both times that he has come up. And the opposite is when you're looking for a fastball and it's 95 miles an hour, but it's out over the plate, just up a little bit and straight. That's usually the one you can tee off on. Looper down the right field line. It's going to be trouble. Kinsler can't make the catch. Tried to make that basket catch, and it tipped off the end of his glove. And I think Ian will be the first one to tell you that that ball's got to be caught. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a catchable ball. And that's going to be ruled an error on Kinsler. Well, the first Ranger error of the evening, and Ian a little bit of uh, a little chagrined at that one. You know, I, I would have to say over the last 10 years, and there's been a lot of infielders involved, the toughest play for our infielders is a pop-up in the outfield uh -huh. that they have to go back on. Yep. It seems like that, that play has given all infielders that we have a tough time. Not all. Not Adrian Beltre. And what we saw the other night, not Laori Garcia either. He's got his uniform. Fast ball just ticked off Cameron. Maybe and he will go to first base. So down to second goes Huntley. Two aboard with two outs for Alexi Amarista. I think, I think one of the infielders that we had when he was still playing shortstop in the prime of his career that had all sorts of problems going after a pop up was Alex Rodriguez. Yeah. He got to the point where he didn't even want to go back after a pop up. Do you think part of that might be the uh, wind currents in, in the ballpark? Maybe. Get I, don't gun shy? I don't know. You know, I've, I don't know that it was just specific to our ballpark. Uh -huh. I think it's something that, you know, in Alex's case, that was just a play that he had a problem with. And you wouldn't think with a guy with speed and athleticism that that would be that big a deal. But Ian, li Ian likes to make that play, kind of that basket catch like he tried right there, and occasionally he'll fail to come up with it. This line drive to left field sends Murphy back a few steps, and David hauls it in. Well, the side retired, an error and a hit batter, no damage. And uh, Shepard's able to send the Padres out. Stretch time in San Antonio. Rangers 5, Padres 3 from the Alamo Dome.
Glad to have you all along this evening. It's been a good ball game here in front of almost 35,000 in San Antonio. Rangers leading five to three. And for Texas. So it'll be Jeff Baker to lead things off. Ron Washington going with the changes now that he had slated before the ball game. So Baker will pinch hit for Adrian Beltre and remain in the ball game. Yeah, Ron Washington is an announcer's dream in spring training because <laughs> when he makes a replacement, that replacement bats in the same spot in the lineup. You yep. don't have to worry about where he's batting. Some managers, Buck Showalter used to drive us crazy because he would change everybody and they'd all be batting in a different spot in the lineup. You know, Luke Gregerson, the right-hander now on the hill for San Diego. And the pitch inside to Jeff Baker. Gregerson appearing in his seventh spring game. did not given up a hit yet. Round ball to the right side. He has now. I said, yeah. And he hadn't faced <laughs> Jeff Baker yet. Guy hitting about 7,000 for the spring. And Baker, a leadoff single in the Rangers' seventh inning, is aboard. <laughs> well, nobody in Arizona could figure out how to get Baker out. And uh, Luke Gregerson can't figure out how to get him out in Texas. Well, the Rangers with their ninth hit of the evening. And it'll bring up Jim Adusi for his first at bat here tonight. Adusi taking over for Nelly Cruz. Runner on the move and uh, the hit and run aboard on and with Baker aboard. And Adusi fouls it away. We'll come back and try it at 0 and 1. Ducey, with those spring numbers, really opened some eyes. And uh, John Washington liked what Ducey could do. And he's not just a one or two dimensional ball player, he can do a lot of different things. The first base, now they're going to try and get the sliding Baker. He is safe under the tag as the throw went down to second after the put out was made at first. That removed the, the force play, and Baker reversed his field and got in under the tag. Yeah, he he just panicked and threw the ball too quickly. Ball's hit hard. There's the out. But he threw the ball so quickly it was before the base runner was almost maybe a third of the way to second base. Gave him time to go right back to first base. You got to tag first base and run at the runner. Make him commit before you make your throw. Now Julio Borbone coming off the bench to back for David Murphy. Tag the bag, just turns and throws before the runners even halfway to second base. And now Jeff Baker looked like he was going to be out, just lifted his right hand and put <laughs> it right over the glove. That's Kyle Blanks playing first base now. Might be wrong on that. Yeah, Kyle Blanks. And a foul tip at home plate with Baker on the move, so he'll have to retrace his steps. And the count is one and one to Julio Borbon. Yeah, a couple of defensive changes for the uh, Padres. We'll catch up on those here in just a moment. There goes Baker again. The pitch in the dirt and sliding in with a stolen pitch this time. Hit Jeff Baker. It's third time. Well, fourth time that he has started towards second base and had to reverse himself. This time he's in with a stolen base. Well, count of two and one to Bourbon. One on, one out. Rangers batting in the bottom of the seventh inning. Looped to the air down the third base line, and that drops about 10 feet into foul territory. We'll catch you up on the uh, defensive changes. Jonathan Galvez has come into the ball game, taking over at second base for the Padres. Talked about Kyle Blanks. He's now the first baseman. 
big guy over there monitoring the uh, first base side of things. At third base, uh, Alexi Amarista moves from his second base spot over to third base. And the new center fielder is Rico Noel. Came on as a pinch runner in the top of the seventh and stayed in the ballgame. Pinch ran for Cameron Maben. Foul straight back. Warbone staying alive at two and two. Bullpen on the field. Now we're set to go. Gregerson comes set. A check of Baker at second. Down ball. Nice play by Gregerson to spear that hot shot. On to first. That's out number two. And Gregerson reacting pretty quickly to. A ball on his bare hand side. Got that glove over there in a hurry, and Borbone tossed out. Hugon Jose Felix now up for his second at bat. Felix came into the ball game as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning and immediately singled. That was part of that three run uprising for the Rangers. Goes after the first pitch from Gregerson with no success. It's 0 1. Gregerson will look back to second. 0 2 now the count to Jose Felix. Rangers five runs on nine hits. Rangers three runs on three hits. Jeff Baker at second base. And a little number foul off the bat of Felix. We'll try it again. The fifth pitcher used this evening by Bud Black. Right hander is ready. And Felix pops it up. On the infield, a towering pop up. Shortstop Cabrera making the call and the catch, and that will do it. Rangers get a leadoff single and can't do anything with it. Baker left stranded. On to the eighth we go. Rangers five, Padres three from the Alamo Dome.
Terminated without the express written consent of Rangers Baseball LLC. Top of the eighth inning. Uh, Rangers on top by a five to three count. And uh, new curler on the mound now. It's Michael Kirkman taking over. Chance to see Kirkman coming out of the bullpen is Buddy Black getting a further explanation of what has uh, transpired here tonight. He's asking questions, and that's the home plate umpire, Jordan Baker, doing his best to answer things. But he said, hey, here's what I saw. What did you see? You, you saw something different than I did. No, nah, you didn't. You know, we were okay. Yeah, that's fine. Spring training, whatever. <laughs> no grudges. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael Kirkman on for his seventh outing of the spring here. Well, with all the games we've done, have we seen Michael no, yet? No, we have not. I was just thinking We've seen some guys every time, yeah. but we haven't seen Michael yet. Yeah, where's Derek Lowe? We've got to get him in here. I seem like he's on every time we uh, we have a shot at him. So Kirkman firing strike one. And Everett Cabrera, who is 0 for 2, is at the plate. Had a walk his last time up. Rip and a miss. And the count moves to no balls and two strikes. Well, just like Gentry and Martin have been so impressive position player, Mitch Moreland position player wise, I guess one of the pitchers that you put in that same category would be Michael Kirkman. Everybody's talked to in rave terms about how he's commanded his fastball and the quality spring that he's had. He's given everybody the confidence that. I don't think Ryan would hesitate to use Michael in the eighth inning if the circumstances were right. Kirkman gets the ground out. That was Brett Nicholas, by the way, the uh, new first baseman that handled that. A whole new team out there for the Rangers. And Washington going to all the substitutes now. Nicholas taking over at first base for Mitch Moreland. No one away. And here's Will Venable, who is two for three. And the changes for you. There's Jeff Baker, who stayed in the ball game for at third base for Adrian Beltre. Shortstop, Gilder Rodriguez. Second baseman, Greg McClatt. And at first is Brett Nicholas. A fielder, Ryan Strasberger. And the center fielder now, Julio Borbon. And the new right fielder would be Jim Adusi. Fastball on the outside corner. Pitch by Michael Kirkman. It's two and one. From the line, Michael Kirkman deals. Just missed the outside corner. Well, Will Venable has shown many sides of his offensive game tonight. A 420-foot home run and a beautiful butt single. Looped into center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Borbone over to play down a hop. And Venable, with his third hit of the night, is aboard with a one-out base hit. Well, folks, opening week continues April 8th through the 10th when the uh, Tampa Bay Rays are in town. Rangers hosting Tampa Bay. The series concludes. It's a 105 start on Wednesday afternoon. And you don't want to miss the first Nolan Ryan beef dollar hot dog day of the season. Call 972 Rangers for tickets today. One on, one out. Carlos Quinton with his fourth at bat. Of the evening. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. It's this one in the air to left field that is hooking down the line and going foul. That's one from here from this angle. You have no idea if nope. that's fair or foul. None. From behind home plate, you know it's foul right off the bat. There's a different angle. See it hooking well foul. No, oh, and one the count to Carlos Quentin. Hit 
Yeah, they shoot tops. One ball, one strike. Quinton, along with a walk, has struck out and grounded a third. Kirkman will check Venable at first. Rep and a miss. One ball, two strikes. Quentin, the guy the Padres got from the White Sox, they thought he would uh, fill a very big void in the power department for them. Injuries have gotten the best of them. Last year and a half, but uh, the Padres certainly hopeful that he is over that now. And as Tom said before, they're not rushing him back right now. They they want him to be completely healthy before he gets back into the lineup. And hopefully he can prevail for the majority of the season and stay healthy. Round ball, Rodriguez to the bag on the first and a 6-3 double play. Yoder Rodriguez gets it done up the middle. And Michael Kirkman works around the one-out single. Nobody left on base. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Rangers five, Padres three from the Alamo Dome. Texas Rangers Baseball on TXA 21 is sponsored by Wendy's. Stop by Wendy's for a Baconator or son of Baconator. Here you decide how big you want to go. And by SportsCityToyota.com. Now our waft up here in uh, San Antonio, that's us up there, the normal football press box. It's great because we're right on the 50-yard line. Unfortunately, not much action on the 50-yard no, line isn't. today. There's not a whole lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> Our angle off here to the side, it, it is a unique perspective. I, I did some games from this angle in old Tiger Stadium. Remember the auxiliary press box was yeah. up on the roof yeah, you did above third base? There. We did several uh, CBS radio games from up there. Huh. And, you know, the angle was kind of like this. You were up much higher. But I felt like I had to have a seatbelt on because I lean over here and I'm out over the field almost. Yeah. Was a little, little in scary. these games, the one thing that's hard is is trying to get the changes because from behind home plate you can see the on deck guys. Right, it's a little bit easier from out here. It's tough to pick them up. <laughs> Luckily, we got Chris Blake helping us out with all the names today. Brett Nicholas, a ground ball up the middle. Nice play on the run by Cabrera. And Nicholas uh, shot down, and that's how the eighth inning begins for the Rangers. New pitcher, by the way, Anthony Bass. Benefiting from Everett Cabrera's nice play behind the bag. Bass, the right-hander, the uh, sixth pitcher used by Bud Black tonight. Then Eric Stoltz, who worked the first four. And then Dale Thayer, Houston Street, Brad Brock, Luke Gregerson, and now 
Anthony Bass and here's Ryan Strasburger for his first at bat. Strike one. And a rip and a foul tip. Austin Hedges, by the way, the uh, new catcher for San Diego. No, that is not Austin Hedges. Right number, wrong, wrong player. Yeah, Strasburger down to the swinging strike three. A oh, two away. And Greg McClatt will get in at bat. Buzz, I don't know if you checked the NCAA scores at all, but if you did, you probably know that the Michigan Wolverines won in overtime tonight against the uh, Jayhawks. Oh, are they still playing basketball? <laughs> they really are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a big game. Congratulations to the, uh, the I Wolverines. Wonder how, I wonder how many people were there. Uh, a couple, probably. That was a that was at uh, Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. yeah I don't. That was that was the first game, right? And they were going to have the yeah, Florida Florida Gulf Coast game. Yeah. Afterwards, battle of the state of Florida. One one pitch to McClatt. Chopper to the right side. That's cut off by Blanks. On to Whoa. on to pass <laughs> covering. It's not in time. And McClatt aboard with a base hit. Yeah, Greg was flying down that line, boy. Might have been an easier play for the second baseman. Although Kyle Blanks made a nice play. He backhanded it and made an accurate throw. But McClatt was just flying down to first base and beat the pitcher. And again, the Rangers wearing out the carpet. <laughs> They've got the infield hit, boy. That must be what Wash is working on late in spring. Yeah. Well, you got to have, first thing you have to have is some speed. Yeah, the Rangers definitely have that, especially with some of the younger guys. Gilder Rodriguez taking a strike. His first at bat. Rodriguez taking over for Elvis Andrews. Elvis was one for two. He was in the middle of a lot of things, though, for the Rangers on base. And snap throw to first. Back with the dive as McClatt. Well, sir, here's where I bet you a million dollars that McClatt's running. You, you would do that here? I want to bet you money that I don't have. Yeah. Rather than say I'm going to jump out of the clubhouse, I'm jump off, <laughs> jump off the press box here. The pitcher knows it too. Now, what happens if he, if he gets picked off? That's okay. No, is it all right? That's okay. Then you can say he was going to run that anyway. It just makes the time of game about five minutes less. <laughs> uh, speed is a major part of his game. Oh no! Oh no! They're working on that infield single. They've got him down again. <laughs> Well, he might steal third. <laughs> yeah, probably not with two outs. Gilder Rodriguez. It's uncanny how many balls. Yet. How many balls the last three games that we've done have been have been just like that? I, don't know, I can't even count how many infield hits. There's two That's this six. inning. Three, four, five, six. That's six. That's six. And they've all been after the fourth inning. Yep. After the third inning. And now it'll be Jan Hervis Solarte's turn to see if he can get it done. Solarte will step in as a pinch hitter for Lance Berkman. The DH slot is the one that Solarte now will occupy. And first ball swinging. He didn't hit it on the ground. That was his first mistake. Way up in the air. And Amarista. He almost had an infield. He almost did. Amarista doing a good job of going into foul territory, coming back into fair territory. And the Rangers are done in the eighth. No runs, two hits. Two left to the ninth we go. Rangers by two in San Antonio.
the Rangers leading by a couple, and they have, I'm not going to say mash the ball tonight, 11 hits. It'll look like that in the box score, though, won't it, Tommy? Like yeah, well, as we just said, six of them have yeah. been infield well, hits. Well, they won't put that in the box score. But they Actually, it really hasn't been a great offensive game for the Rangers. They left the bases loaded and nobody out one inning. Mm-hmm. They had, uh, I believe it was Martin on third with nobody out. A little bit after, nobody out a little bit after that. Couldn't get him in. But they got enough of them in to have a lead here with that Joe Nathan on the mound. Joe Nathan trying to close it down here tonight, and Kyle Blanks will start things off. And in a two-run game, you'd much rather have this big guy starting the inning off where he can't tie it with a home run. He is kind of all or nothing, or he has been early in his career anyway. Big guy at 6'6". Working against... The Ranger closer, Joe Nathan. And the first pitch inside. One ball, no strikes. Check swing, and it's a strike. One and one. Blank's having a good spring. He had three home runs, 14 driven in. Fastball, and that's just off the plate. Two and one. Blanks goes 6-6. Six, six. It's listed at 264. Out of Sellersville, Pennsylvania. To center field. Coming on is Borbon. Now puts the brakes on as the ball carries a little bit further than he thought. And Blanks is out number one here in the ninth inning. Now Jesus Guzman will face Joe Nathan. Rangers with a win tonight have a chance to uh, finish the spring at a 500 level. They are 15 and 17 with a couple of ties. So a win tonight would make them 16 and 17. And tomorrow's final game of uh, the spring. Give them an opportunity to have the first 500 or better record since 2009. Ripping a miss. It is 0-2. But if you'll remember 2010, 11, and 12 were not bad years no. uh, in the regular season. So spring training records uh, you take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, it'd be interesting to go back over a number of years and see all the teams that won the Grapefruit League or the Cactus League, and how many of them were playoff teams? Uh-huh. Kansas City had a great spring, and I think they're going to be a contender this year. It's inside two and two. Yeah, you would think uh, with the young players they have, they haven't had a problem in the last several years scoring runs, and uh, pitching had been their, especially starting pitching had been their, their real downfall, and they appear to have addressed that pretty handily. Yeah, their starting pitching is good. Good bullpen. They've got some great arms out in their bullpen, too. Nathan, a little toss to first. And the Padres now down to their final out. Nathan now. Award to Jonathan Galvez. Young infielder that had come on for uh, Jed Jerko. Alves in limited playing time. Pretty good numbers. Nathan goes to work. Strike one. Tomorrow's game will be interesting from the standpoint of see who Ron Washington is going to put on the field because he said that he'd like to give his regulars the day off and have them very fresh for Sunday night's season opener against the Houston Astros. Wash, of course, has a list of about 45 guys that he can choose from that, that are with the club here in San Antonio. Fastball just inside, two and one the count. And Derek Hotman will get the start for the Rangers. He'll be opposed by Jason Marquis. And again, that's a one o'clock Central Daylight Time. Start right here. Rangers Network. That ball's blasted to left field. 
Going back is Strasburger, and that ball is gone. Jonathan Galvez leaving the ballpark. That is the third home run of the night for the Padres. They have accounted for all four San Diego runs. It's now a 5-4 to four Ranger lead. Well, that is pretty pumped up going around the bases. That would be too. A fastball inside part of the plate. Put a nice swing on it. Just lined it right out of here. Fan was pretty pumped up too. Last ball to John Baker. Come in and then caught last half inning. 275 for the spring for Baker. Nathan had the same reaction that we had and Washhead. Where was that pitch? Or something like that. <laughs> it's funny seeing Joe Nathan out on the mound and Jose Felix coming out, patting him on the back, <laughs> saying, Hang in there, big guy. Yeah. Come we'll on, now him. settle down. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the catcher's supposed to do. Yep. Two old pitch. And it's two and one. Yeah. There are some there, veteran pitchers. The there are some veteran pitchers that we've both played with and against <clears throat> that would have told the young catcher, get back behind the plate, mind your own business. He wouldn't have gotten halfway <laughs> to the mound. You might have been one of them. <laughs> no. No? No. I let, let him get to the dirt. <laughs> Nathan, a big sigh, and the right-hander deals. 2-1 pitch is low. It's three balls and a strike. Joe Nathan in danger now, putting the tying run aboard with two outs. John Baker, the hitter. And Nathan back to it. And the pitch is low. Ball four, and the Padres do indeed get the tying run aboard. Enrico Noel will be the hitter. Now that's one area I think Ranger pitchers will look back tonight and say, you know, we didn't do a very good job. That's the sixth walk that they have issued to the Padres here this evening. And it's uh, maybe not figured as heavily into the scoring as it could have, but still the Padres with four hits in this game. Three of them have been home runs and one of them a two-run home run after a walk. Ball one to Noel. Mike Maddox signaling down to the bullpen to get somebody warmed up. Just like Houston Street came out early, probably because of pitch count. I think they're saying they have to get someone warmed up because they don't want this close to the season. Joe Nathan throwing too many pitches either. There's a fastball that just off the outside corner. And again, Felix is going to go out and say something to Nathan. Colin Ballister, right hander, is going to start loosening in a hurry in that bullpen. Now you can only see the lower half, but that is Colin Ballister. You have to trust us on this one. Well, when they built this stadium, they definitely didn't plan for a bullpen since they nope. didn't plan for a baseball field either. 2 0 the count, Nathan. Ready to work. And it's popped up. This ought to do it. Gilder Rodriguez going out, calling for the fair catch on the 45. And he puts it away. And Rod Washington, Huxford, Jackie Moore, and for Dave Magadan and company as the Rangers get back to within a game of 500. They win this contest by a final of 5 to 4. Rod Washington and Jakes for all the coaches. And the players come out get the players too. Yeah, a good job of uh, stringing together what was given to him tonight. Range was able to get 11 base hits even though some infield variety that played big in this but they got the job done. 5-4 the final. We'll be right back to San Antonio 
can wrap things up. Rangers over the Padres from the Alamo Dome.